Good morning, everyone, and welcome to De Montford University's live stream on studying postgraduate study in pharmaceutical biotechnology. So before the stream actually starts, I just want to say a massive thank you for everyone who's taken time out of their busy days during lockdown. I know there's absolutely 101 things that you guys could be doing right now, being in Amazon, watching Netflix, playing your PlayStation, your Xbox, or however you're filling your your lockdown time to come and listen to a few experts to talk around the topic of pharmaceutical biotechnology. Now, before we start, I'm just going to chuck out a major admission here. I have absolutely no idea what but pharmaceutical biotechnology is. So please do not direct any questions to me because you'll just get a straight face. I think I've been brought in here for my pretty face and to make jokes that aren't remotely funny. But don't panic, I have got some experts with me that will be able to give you the insight that you guys need in order for those that are considering studying postgraduate um, pharmaceutical biotechnology at De Montford University. This show is orientated around yourselves and we would really like you guys to get involved with the comment section. So if you're watching us on the website, you can click onto the YouTube link that's embedded there and it will take you to a section where you'll be able to drop us some comments. I'll be reading out any comments that we get within the show, and hopefully if you guys have any questions, we can answer those as we go through the next hour or so. So the first expert that I want to introduce is Neil. Hi there. Neil. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for How joining us today. How are you doing today? Not too bad. Good. Looking forward to any questions that come out and trying to get people involved with the, the course that we've got in October starting. Excellent. So, guys, for, the, for any of you that are watching, so if you do have any questions, Neil's your go-to. He's the guy you need to be tagging in the comments and really get his brain working on this Wednesday morning. So we have got a star-studded lineup for you guys. We've been recruiting all across the world. We've got students coming across from the all four corners of the globe. So first up, we have Florence. I think your mic might be muted, Florence. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Florence and I'm from Belgium and I'm currently working as a production manager in the cosmetic industry. And where are you streaming from today, Florence? Uh, from the company, so from Belgium. From Belgium, see it's not as good as Birmingham, but it will be. <laughs> Um, next up, we have Wanyu. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Wanyu Adebinpe. Um, I'm a method development scientist. I'm currently in the UK, and I work in the pharmaceutical industry. And we basically focus on research and development. Excellent. And where are you coming from, Wanyu? Um, I'm right now in Nottingham. Nottingham. Yeah, <laughs> worldwide broadcast, and you're coming from Nottingham. <laughs> it's a global company, so I can. <laughs> cool. Next up, we have Darren. Darren, are you there? Hello, everyone. I'm Darren, and I come from come from China. I'm now a cell culture engineer at a Bell Pharmaceutical company. Ah, uh, excellent. And uh, last but not least, we also have Maria. Hi, I'm Maria. I'm from Spain and I'm the current student from the master. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. So all of the guests that we have on this live stream for you today are either current or ex-students that have all studied this postgraduate degree in pharmaceutical and biotechnology. But the first thing that I want to do is cross over to Neil, if that's OK, for you to give a bit of a insight around what the course has to offer. Neil, are you okay to do that? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. Excellent. Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, my name is Neil Hawley. I'm the program leader for the MSc in Pharmaceutical Biotechnology. Um, so we run the slides. Dal, is that, is, is that okay to do? So, whoop, slight bang in the background there. Um, so um, it's an MSc in Pharmaceutical Biotechnology. It's a one year postgraduate master's course and it's um, at De Montford University um, School of uh, Pharmacy. Um, on this slide here, the reason why I've got this slide up here, we, we've got our um, Twitter page. So the, the, the course itself has a Twitter page. So that's at DMU um, Farm Biotech. Um, if we go to the next slide, I'll 
just give you a quick overview of um, our course philosophy. So um, it's a rather holistic approach to the field of pharmaceutical biotechnology. And we're trying to introduce many different uh, facets of the biotechnology course and the concepts that are involved. So we're looking at things like bioinformatics, which uh, you may have seen a lot of um, talk about in the in the news of late. Um, but not only are we looking at the biological side of things, we're also looking at the business business aspects of the course. We're also looking at the experiential learning that underpins all of the theory that we um, have on the course. So um, a couple of those slide photographs there are, are um, so the the little diagrams we've got on that slide kind of showed the the cohort this year that we've had so we've got you know quite a big diverse cohort um, um, we do lots of labs that are uh, around biotechnology and looking at the concepts of going from in the little slide little pictures that we've got down the side there so we've got the concepts of looking at experiments moving those forward because we're looking at DNA and how DNA um, is we can use the knowledge of DNA in uh, working with proteins and manufacturing proteins to be turned into um, biopharmaceutics. So I thought the best thing I could do is give a quick overview of the various modules that are on the course. So if we go to the next slide, um, this is basically an overview of the course. So um, the MSc in Pharmaceutical Biotechnology provides you with a, a kind of detailed insight into the technologies that allow the development and the production of biopharmaceuticals. So biopharmaceuticals are unlike your normal um, small chemical entities, we're looking at larger molecules that are, are more proteinaceous in nature. So the course is, has a quite, quite a high practical in silico content. Um, and it, we're essentially trying to cover things that go from preclinical studies right the way through to clinic. Um, so we're, we're, we're looking at the marketing of those, those products. Um, the course tries to furnish its students with a truly diverse range of skills and experiences. Um, and we try to do that by bringing in various schools. So we, we also have the business school involved with that. Um, so we hope that the students benefit from um, an interdisciplinary subjects and um, state of the art laboratories. And we, we call upon the expertise that we have within our teaching team who can give you um, a, an insight into their knowledge of um, working in industry and working in academia. Um, the course is, has basically received um, quite a lot of um, positive feedback from industry. So industry have, have uh, commented that the course is uh, forward think, thinking and it's innovative and it has a, a, um, lots of future proof concepts that are in there. I'm just going to give a quick overview of the various modules that are within the course. So we have uh, 5310 which is the biopharmaceutical and toxicology module. So here we're looking at looking at disease states, looking at the proteins that could be um, involved in those disease states, and also trying to look at um, the use of biopharmaceuticals to interrupt those disease states. Uh, the next module we have is microbial fermentation and drug development. So here we're looking at an understanding of proteins and how those proteins can be used to manufacture biopharmaceuticals. In this module, we talk about how drug development comes about how a concept of a disease state and how we could interact with that disease state from a proteinaceous um, basis. So using protein molecules, how we can interact with different receptors that are present in certain disease cascades and how we can develop drugs based on a knowledge of the receptors um, for those various entities. Uh, the next module that we have is the gene cloning expression and analysis module. So this is a module that I'm the uh, module leader for and I'm um, pas very passionate about this module. So this is the, the, the core module for getting your wet lab experience. So we'll go through how we clone, express and identify various proteins in, in a process of looking at the DNA, how we can get that DNA into the cells, how we can get those cells to produce proteins, and how we can get those proteins back out to use in various assay, assays. So um, a lot of the work we do is looking at uh, P450s, which is a personal passion of mine. Um, so we're looking at P450s and how they are used in drug metabolism. And so we can express P450s and go through various enzyme activity tests to, to have a look at the, how much the P450s have been expressed. The next two modules are bioinformatics orientated models, uh, modules. And you may have seen quite a bit about those in the news. 
Um, essentially, that gives you an understanding of the research tools and methodologies that you would use in looking at interrogating DNA and seeing how that DNA is translated into proteins. So we've got the co current COVID crisis going on. There's been lots of work looking at the proteins that are involved in the mechanism of action of the virus. And bioinformatics is an area that would really use your knowledge of, uh, of how you manipulate DNA, how you manipulate proteins in order to understand the mechanisms of the actions of a disease. Um, after you've done all that, you've got your final um, two modules, which are research methodologies, which is looking at how we analyze data, how we interpret data, how we turn that data into quantitative analysis methods. And then we've also got our interaction with the business school. So that um, we have one module which is completely business orientated. And in that module, we look at, um, because this is, so all of the other modules are more or less based on looking at the science, proteins, the DNA, how things work in cells. But if we're gonna be working in a company, we need to know how we can turn that ideas, those concepts, those those products that we produce and how we can produce them as a worldwide wide product. And so we need to have some understanding about how the business world works. And so our business creation and innovation module um, allows the students to, to to have an insight into that world. That module is held in the business school. So our MSc students will join the business cohort and you'll be working alongside people who've got lots of uh, business acumen, people who've been doing business for uh, many years, the students on that course, that you'll be joining a business orientated course. Um, and we often find that our students perform very well in that course, even though you're kind of being dumped in at the deep end. But it does mean you have a new aspect of, of how to look at biopharmaceutics and their use in, in the wider world. And then, of course, as the final summation, we have a three month uh, research dissertation. And this is where you get to, to bring all of the information from the course and put it into a, a lab based practical, although this year that might be a, a slightly different um, perspective of the way we look at that, what with lockdown and possible second waves occurring from the um, COVID crisis. But there is a research element and you'll get to put into practice a lot of the concepts that we've learned um, on the course. Um, so I think, shall we turn it over, Dal, to, to, to some of the students? Because I think you've got a couple of questions for our students on the course or ex-students. Thank you so much for that. I'll just bring everyone back into the chat. So one of the questions that we've got, first of all, is, if a student's watching this, how would they know that this route is the right specialism for them? Okay, so um, I, I think what we'll so before we answer that question, shall we we go to the various students and, and, and ask them what they're doing now in terms yeah, so, of where they are in in their roles, uh, and then I can probably come back to that because uh, I can use the slides to come back to that. So. Um, who should oh, we go no with? Problem. Florence, do you want yeah, to give we'll us a little background on where you are now? Um, so um, I did both my undergrad and my postgraduate um, at the Monster University. Um, and um, in my final year of cosmetic science, I did an elective called biopharmaceuticals, and that gave me an introduction to the biotechnology. And then from that moment, I knew that I wanted to continue in that field. Um, but my dream was always to go into the cosmetic industry um, and the biopharmaceutical course has really given me an advantage over um, other formulators that I have an understanding of um, um, biotechnology and because the cosmetic industry um, is quite competitive and um, it's very important to be in, uh, innovating and have um, uh, new ingredients and uh, in the recent years we've seen a lot of uh, biotechnology actually getting into the cosmetic industry and um, giving new um, forms uh, and new um, active ingredients that we can use in cosmetics um, differentiating us from other brands. Thank you for that Florence. Uh, we're going to cross over to Maria. So I did my bachelor's in Spain, I did biomedical sciences. And throughout those years, I realized that I, I did a lot of clinical background, um, especially how diseases were produced, their diagnosed, treatments, uh, symptoms. And then at the very end, I had some models like bioinformatics and how 
drugs are used and produced in order to try to beat these diseases. And I was really interested in that. So I wanted to do a postgraduate course that could provide me this kind of focus in how we can use drugs, how we can create them, how can we use bioinformatics in this field. And I found this master and I thought it was kind of what I wanted to do. I'm currently doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Maria. Wanyu, what about yourself? So, um, right now, as I said earlier, I'm a method development scientist. And I, the reason why I chose um, biotechnology, pharmaceutical biotechnology, was because I wanted to be able to go into the pharma industry, but also go into the biopharma industry. I wanted to branch into the biopharma industry because I realized during my education, doing of pharmaceutical and genetic sciences, which I did with Florence, um, I realized that biotechnology is the future of medications. Like most medications are being personalized now. We're getting a lot of small molecules, turning them into drugs. It, it, it is part of what I'm doing right now as a research and development scientist. Um, recently, a client of ours where I work at got a drug approved for a rare form of cancer in January in America, which is a big deal. Um, we work with stuff like Alzheimer's, which is which is what you learn on um, you learn in the course. You learn about things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's diseases. You learn about a lot of cancers and how you know to study pathways and use tools such as bioinformatics statistics tools to be able to manipulate these proteins and you know get them working the way you want them to. So. I feel like the course more than equipped me to, you know, get on a good foot in industry. I've got, I see, I've got more insight compared to most people I work with because of biotechnology. It's also more critical, more advanced than any normal science. You have to be more patient. You have to study a lot of things, you know, study a lot of pathways as well as the chemistry behind things and molecules. So. I think it's so really well and well rounded course. Also having the business course with it also makes it very well rounded course. It gives you it gives you an idea of you know having business acumen so you can understand what business is like before you get into the industry or you become professional. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Wan Yu. And last but not least, we've got Darren. Yeah. I did my undergraduate of um pharmaceutical science at the Montfort University. And I think biopharmaceutical industry become more and more important nowadays. So I want, uh, I want spend, spend my uh, postgraduate at, at biopharmaceutical technology. And, and this course, um, and a lot, we have, we have a lot of um, experiment projects which can help you improve your experimental skills and uh, manipulate manipulative abilities. This will help you a lot uh, at your um, lab career. And also we have many group works like the business creativity. And this will help you if you want to start, start your own business or if you have some idea, you want to make it become a product. And this um, do, doing this course, I, I, I really need a lot help. I really need a lot and the course really helped me uh, to get my job, that's all. Thank you so much for that, Darren. Mm -hmm. Looking at it from an outsider perspective, I don't know, as I've said, I don't know much around um, pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical biotechnology, but listening to your extracts, listening to your accounts and having a listen around some of the stuff that you'll be able to research surely does sound very interesting and the skills and the research and the modules that you guys cover is a very, very exciting prospect for someone to, to undertake. So how would a student know if this route is the right specialism for them okay so um i think if we if we put the slides up so i think if we go to the the, the next slide we'll we'll see what kind of so um yeah so if you put the 
the one after the hexagonal slides, that'd be great. So this one here. So um, it's one of the first questions we get asked a lot on the course. Um, you know, what kind of background do I need? Um, how do I know that this course is is correct for me? And and the honest answer is that we, we kind of pride ourselves on taking a very diverse um, background of students. So we've already heard from some of the testimonies of the students here today, all of who have been brilliant on our courses, by the way. Um, that we've got quite a, a, a diverse background. So we do recruit from pharmacists. So this year we've got one pharmacist on the course. We've in, in um, recent years, we've had chemical engineers on Although they found the course challenging because they're chemical engineers, they still um, found the course um, useful and engaging and, and they enjoyed it. Um, of course, if you're a biochemist or a biologist or a biomedical scientist, um, the course, you know, you'll adapt to the course very, very, very quickly. Um, we found that people who've done biomedical science backgrounds, um, their science degree is slightly off from the um, pharmaceutical biotechnology. So when they come to the course, they start to learn a whole new um, area of discipline, a whole new way of looking at science. Um, and recently, we've started to take on board quite a few forensic scientists. So I actually teach on the forensic science course as well. So um, I'd like to think they're coming because of me, but that's probably less of the less of the case. Um, but with our forensic scientists, their background is very, very different from this course. And so um, what does that say about the course? It says that the course is taught in such a way that, you know, as long as you've got a, a, a decent science background, you will cope with this course. You, of course, you'll find it challenging because it's an MSc course and going up to M level education requires a, a certain bit of um, um, effort on your part. And it requires a, a, a learning curve that can be quite steep in, in, in some instances. But if your background is science based, um, you will cope with this course. You know, we, it, 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 as I say, the forensic science course is quite removed from this um, degree. But the good thing about that is that, um, you know, if your background is slightly off from pharmaceuticals, um, biotechnology, when you finish this course, you'll be a completely different animal in terms of recruitment um, into into companies and that because you'll have all the experience from your undergraduate degree and then you'll have this enhanced level of um, MSc level teaching um, and you'll have a, a completely new set of cards to your your game of um, um, when you're being recruited. So a lot of our postgraduates were also actually recruiting postgraduates so we don't all don't always recruit from undergraduate um, disciplines we also recruit from the bio uh, bio graduate market so we have had people who have worked in pharmacy practice um, we've had NS nhs screening lab students come in so a couple of years ago we had um, a student who came in purely so that he could get some experience on working in laboratories so that he could then go back and set up um a new lab suite within the NHS screening labs. We've had from our overseas students, we've had many um, uh, military medical doctors, uh, particularly from Iraq. We've had um, people from that area that have come in. They've got a science background, so they haven't um, had difficulties with the course too much, but they've been able to adapt to the new area. And of course, we've also got people who um, were originally in biotech pharmaceutical companies. So one example I can think of was we had a student from Malaysia who came specifically for the practical content on the course. Um, he was within a biotech company. So a lot of the concepts we taught on the course he was familiar with, but he came to learn a complete new skill set. And after he finished the course, he went back into his biotech company. Um, and as far as I'm aware now, he's actually a, um, a team leader and he's running a whole area within that division um, purely because of the experiences he got from, from, from the, the course. In terms of where do we recruit from? Uh, we're quite unusual in our course in that we recruit, as you can see from, from the, my uh, esteemed um, colleagues that are on on the talk today we recruit from across the world so we you know we we recruit heavily from countries like india malaysia of course the uk with and a lot of them are going to be our alumni students so as i've said um, forensic science students and pcs students of which we've we've got some of them on the panel today um, europe of course so france spain we've got a um a student from spain today belgium florence um we recruit also from uae Saudi Arabia, China, Ding Bang's from China, um, or Darren as he's known, um, Egypt, Liberia, 
Jordan, Pakistan, Kenya, Guy, Guyana, and Nigeria, and I believe one who's from uh, originally from uh, Nigeria. So we're a, we're a um, a multinational course, and as such, we need to adapt the way we teach this course to take into account that you know you may be an overseas student, so you're going to find that transition difficult to start with, and you may be um, um, an, an undergraduate from a different discipline, and so we we try to to, to to take that on board when we're when we're teaching on the course, um, and I, I don't know. You could you could probably ask ask um, the people who are here in the talk today what if they, if they feel that the, the course reflects that. Cool, excellent. Thank you so much for that. I thought we had a, a new member on the stream when you said ding. I was like, oh, who, who, who's that? Somebody else. <laughs> Friend, I'm, yeah, Darren, I'm, I'm sorry, missing off yeah. completely. <laughs> so, shall we go over to Maria? and sort of understand your um, route in? How did you know that this was the right subject, right path for you? Um, sure. So as I said before, I did biomedical sciences. I did a lot of clinical background and I kind of realized that I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be stuck in a hospital analyzing samples from patients. I wanted to be in a lab. I wanted to do have more uh, background that it was more in a molecular way. So I became really interested in bioinformatics because I really believed it was, it is something that it's going to become basic thing in a lab, basic thing in an investigation. And I wanted to improve my background in the molecular and pathway points of view. So I wanted to go out of Spain. Uh, I wanted to do a master outside. So I thought UK would be a good start. And when I found this master, I thought it was the most suitable for me, considering I what I wanted to do. It's true that because it is called pharmaceutical biotechnology, at the beginning, my biggest fear was that it was going to be a lot of chemistry, a lot of point of view that it was more from pharmacy than from my background. And actually, when I met the initial people in the master, I, I get a lot of, it was also from biomedical sciences. She was exactly the same. She was thinking that maybe she was, didn't fit at all. But the thing is that it wasn't an issue. They understand that people come from different backgrounds. They kind of do an initial um, explanation of things to check if we understand, if we need more uh, more time, if, we, if they can go faster. And obviously, if you have any doubt, if, you're, if there is something you're not understanding, they're always there for you to give you more information or spend more time to you to explain stuff. So I think people shouldn't be worried about that, about how are they going to become, if they're going to be able to do this or not. Because they will definitely will. Thank you so much for that, Maria. So, Darren, is it right that you've studied both your undergraduate and your postgraduate at De Montfort University? Would you be able to talk to us a bit about your experiences? Okay. Uh, I I spent both of my undergraduate and postgraduate at the Moffat University. Um, and at first, I'm kind of nervous and afraid of maybe I will come um, kind of like culture shock or maybe have many difficulties at, at class when I first come to UK. But the teacher and classmates at the Moffat were very nice and they gave me a lot of help. I think I adopt to the new environment very quickly and I really enjoy the course. Um, at first, my, my background is more, uh, is more in chemical, chemical. And when I chose to start study biopharmaceutical biotechnology, I was afraid um, if I really need some biology background. And um, when I talked to Dr. Dr. Holly, and he gave me uh, he gave me many advice and gave me some book list what I what we need for the class for the class and if you just go through the go through the go through the book list and get some get some basic knowledge of the biology and you can you, you can easily to catch up the class and um, since this, since the bell, um, the class is more more about the technology, and you, uh, 
it's kind of new, even though, uh, even though you, um, your background is biology. So, um, uh, I, I really, I, I really think it doesn't matter where you come from. Um, if you want to choose this course, if, if you want to choose this course, uh, I think the teacher will help you a lot. <laughs> you, 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 you will do a lot. Yeah. You, 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 you. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for that, Darren. Um, I didn't want to leave you there on your own in case you needed us to jump in. So you were talking there about teacher support. Um, could you tell us mm -hmm. around how DMU has supported you in landing your current role to so your current position that you're doing at the moment? Okay. Yeah. I'm now a cell culture engineer, cell culture engineer in a biopharmaceutical company. And um, I think my studying abroad experience helped me a lot in company is when, when the company have various foreigner foreigner related business, the employee who come back from uh, studying abroad will will be first arranged arranged to some king uh, some core uh, positions. And what's more, uh, as I mentioned, the, the the experience of studying abroad um, can help you to. Uh, adopt to a new environment quickly, and you have to balancing balancing your work and life, your working and life, and this will help you a lot, not only in your career and in your future life. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Darren. Anyone else want to get involved on that? Um, how has DMU helped Maria Florence won you in regards to you guys landing your types of position? Does anyone want to contribute or add on to that? Well, um, to build on what Darren and Mary have said, um, the support of the lecturers is actually incredible. You know, they're always willing to help. The door is always open. Literally, I could remember the amount of times I disturbed Dr. Hawley and Dr. Ben. Um, they're completely amazing. And to be honest with you, one of the determining factors in me getting my first job was the testimonial I got from Dr. Hawley. But obviously I couldn't have got my grades and done as well as I could have if I didn't have the support of my lecturers. So, you know, DME is great like that. And to build up on DMU, like the current company I work at, in literally almost every department, we've got um, students from DMU. Some which I went to undergraduate, but left because I did the masters, but eventually, I get into industry and I'm in a much better place because I went ahead and I did a master's. So I've got more knowledge and I'm more wanted, so to speak, in industry because we did a lot of experiments, we did a lot of research. And with all the research we did, we had to present literally nine out of 10 of the time. So you build your confidence as well. You, you're able to talk to other people, your communication skills, which has also helped in me. And and dealing with clients at work as well and also like we got to do incredible um dissertations like my dissertation was based on cytochrome p450s and i had to do that with fruit flies which i've never done before which was really incredible and and i learned a lot about flies i learned a lot about a new sort of organism in the in taxonomy you know i learned about how to manipulate um, proteins, I learned about how to, you know, compare proteins from different organisms and relate them to human proteins. So what you learn in the course is vast, is absolutely vast. And, you know, it, it goes a long way with you. You know, that's the best way I'm going to put it. Thank you so much for that, Wanyu. Maria or Florence, would either of you like to, to add on anything different? Yeah, uh, so I've done both my undergrad and my postgraduate. So I was in the UK for four years and uh, I was only 18 when I came uh, to the UK on my own. And I must say the university has really uh, supported me through those years. And um, that's also the reason why I decided to continue um, um, a postgraduate at the Montfort University as well. And the postgraduate, so the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical biotechnology course, the, um, the classes are very interactive. Um, 
so there were you could always ask questions um the lectures will ask you questions as well so there's a lot of interaction which i think makes it um makes it easier for everyone to follow uh, and um no one is left behind so that was really nice so a lot of support that's that's what we like to hear neil it's obvious that you're supporting your students very well you and your team trying to <laughs> <laughs> i try to give them as much support as i can um I, I i kind of hope that um i'm available some students say i'm available too much but i i try my hardest to be available as much as i can um my family aren't probably uh, so happy about that but i i i, I do find that i you know I, I get a lot of joy out of helping the students um and any troubles they have i do try to, to to come back to them with that as soon as i possibly can yeah i think for me personally although i didn't study this this area when i did my postgrad it was what talk, listening to you neil talk about that transition or that step up into into master's level it can sometimes be seeming very daunting it can feel like it's you're isolated you're on your own to hear these testimonies from the students to say that they've been well supported is very encouraging for anyone that wants to go on to study um a postgraduate course maria is there any other praises you'd like to sing about neil and his team <laughs> your mic's off um, <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's what they all said they are really there for you they help you a lot with every single thing they make sure you understand everything they can they provide you as much help as, as they can and then it's what it's different from, for example, I didn't do my, my uh, undergraduate in TMU. What I found so different and so good, it was that this interaction that Florence said, usually you go to a lecture and you just sit there and hear people talking and give you a presentation and that's all. But they kind of show, they kind of teach you by interacting with you, make you questions, make you think. And I think that's how you learn the most. I have definitely learned a lot throughout these years. So it's really nice. and to have that and to kind of see how you're evolving in this way. Thank you so much for that. So Neil, I've got a question for you. So can you tell us what our other students have gone on to do from completing this postgraduate course? Um, but very diverse backgrounds. We could probably show the last slide of the, the talk. Of course. Um, because that, that, that kind of overviews a lot of the areas. Uh, apologies to anybody who's in that photograph. <laughs> so I, I stole a couple of photographs from, from our, our graduation um, recently. So yeah, we, we kind of, because uh, our client base is is worldwide in its distribution, um, where people go to go and do jobs afterwards is, is worldwide in its distribution. Um, we lo like to think that after the course, we, we place people both in industry um, and be that in small spin out companies or in advanced research labs um, or actually big farmers. Um, a lot of our students do go on to pursue further studies in um, the PhD field. So we, we do translate a lot of our students every year to go on to do PhD. So um, students join our course with a with a, a predetermined goal and that, that that normally is to go and work in industry or to get um, build up their skill set so that they can go back to their original industry jobs. But what we do find is a lot of students after the, doing the, the, the research dissertations, because it's a three month um, period where you're in the laboratory working um, under normal circumstances, they do then find that they have got a passion for, 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 for research. And so we do see a lot of people translated into, into going off and um, applying for PhDs. And those PhDs are not only UK based, you know, we've got people placed across the world in terms of um, where they've gone on to to do PhDs. Um, we also have people going into research and development. Some people go straight into management roles, um, which for me, I, I, you know, if I'm being perfectly frank, I would be quite um, bored with doing a management role. I, I, I much prefer working in a laboratory based um, aspects, but management's required, otherwise nothing runs properly. We have lots of people going into quality assurance, um, regulatory um, aspects of, of the job. And again, um, from very small spin out companies to big farmers, big international pharma companies. Um, lots of our students, as I've said, have progressed on to, to, to do international universities um, to do their PhD. So, um, you know, there's, there's a list there of, of some of the universities that we've, we've um, placed students in. Um, some of our overseas students are fortunate enough that after they do their MSc, they actually go back home and become lecturers themselves at universities. Um, and so some of our ex-students now are, are um, um, 
part of the management teaching structure within some of the universities um, back home in their in their home countries. So, you know, I think we give people a firm basis. We give them a, a good ethos at work. And so um, we have lots of different areas that people go go into. It's, it's not like some of the um, MSc courses where, you know, you, you're, you're narrowed down and narrowed down and narrowed down and you become um, very expert in one discipline. Um, I'd like to think that the MSc gives people are um, quite a broad, a broad spectrum, but with still some core knowledge base that you need in order to, to, to sell yourself to, to, to various companies. As I've said, some of our students start off with, with a, a, an undergraduate background. So for instance, if we think about Darren and um, Florence and uh, one of the, they, they all came from a perspective um, which was more small chemical entity pharmaceutical backgrounds, um, and they've diverged into the, the biotech um, knowledge realms, you know, everything that's going on in the world at the moment, um, we're not looking at that from small chemical entity perspective. We're looking at it from the biology of how the virus works. And so biotechnology is the, you know, the, the building blocks of how we combat this this you know, terrible thing and how we we overcome it eventually, as we will do, because that's our endeavor as, as humans and scientists to overcome um, these things. And that overarching biotechnology background from the course will, will enable you to become a very sellable project uh, product in in my opinion absolutely so thank you so much for that um so one you do you want to tell us about your current role and how you got there uh, the first um, role i got after university was in south wales I it was um, it was a respiratory company which is a sort of niche in pharma. Uh, so I was doing quality insurance there, and I was able to land that role based on my undergrad and my um, master's course. With undergrad, with the PCS course, I was able to learn a lot about pharma rules and regulations, what to do, what not to do, and. With my master's, I became more proficient in the lab. You know, I was able to pick up mistakes so quickly. You know, I was able to work faster in the lab. So that also helped me get the job as a quality assurance um, officer. So my job then was to basically monitor things in the lab, make sure rules and regulations were being adhered to by other scientists, you know, make sure that the technical writing was good enough as well, which the master's course also did for me because we did do a lot of writing. We did, like I said, we did a lot of research into a lot of diseases and we had to do a lot of writing, we had to do a lot of presentations. And um, another thing that was good about the master's course was um, we had to critique each other. So we had to, had to be unbiased in so many ways. And right now I'm a method development scientist and basically the main role as a method development scientist is to go through a product cycle of a drug. You know, when you get your small entities or your actives, you know, you study them, develop them, develop formulations for those drugs, whether it is a tablet or a capsule or a soft gel, whatever it, whatever it may be, you know, then we develop it, we, you know, create parameters around it, we do preclinical studies, we do stability studies, then after the stability studies, you know, we do our animal testing, then we get onto the clinical trials. You know, currently I'm working on an Alzheimer's drug. And it's quite interesting, you know, the, the sort of things you learn in industry. And because of my knowledge, like when I go into meetings and other departments are talking, I understand what is being said. I'm not kind of lost. So I, like Neil said earlier on in the live stream, um, this course also focuses on, you know, manipulating stuff, looking at things and preclinical studies to, to the market. And that is basically my main role. I you know, research I develop, then I also do a lot of validation as well. So, um, like I said, it's a well-rounded course and yeah, it's done a lot of great. And one, before I jump back over to you in a second, uh, can you tell us around the support that you've had personally in regards into this transition of graduating from your, your post-grad and into, into your role? What's the support been like for you personally? 
Well, personally, it's been amazing. Like, I've had to contact um, Dr. Hawley a couple of times in the past couple of years, and each time he, I've tried to contact him, he gets back to me as soon as possible. And like I said, he, I had to contact him again after the uni because like, he gave me such a stupendous testimonial. It was so amazing. I was shocked myself. I was like, really, was that, was that what I did? You know, so, and that testimonial still is a determining factor with how I get jobs today. So uh, it's pretty brilliant. Like I said, the support you get from lectures whilst doing the course and even after you've done the course. And, you know, it, it creates avenues for you to like, you know, think about ideas, create ideas, or come up with new innovations, you know. That's how open the lectures on the course are. It's been pretty great. Like, support has not withered once. Okay, so how much did you pay, Neil, for this? A lot. Uh, I've, I've had to remortgage the house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can tell there's definitely been an incentive given somewhere. <laughs> You know, it gives out stupendous references to help you that much on you. You're not kidding anyone. <laughs> no, but we, I, I do, I do really, you know, take when, when, when you come as a student to my course, I, you know, I try my utmost to, to ensure that you leave the course with a, with a good feeling about the course. And, you know, as I say, we've still got students contacting us from the very first year that we started, which was um, 2000 and um 11 you know i've still got students who ask me for, for for references now i mean whether it's relevant after that length of time but i'm still very happy to to to, to, to foster references for students um i like to think that everybody that i've taught on the course i still remember because it's always strange that students say you may not remember me and it was like two years ago and I, I know i'm getting old <laughs> but i'm not that old that my memory's <laughs> fading to you know i, I you know we, we we take all of the students on the course to our heart and we, we, we try to ensure that they, um, you know, come out with a, a good result at the end and, and they have an enjoyable experience. Excellent. So, Florence, do you want to talk to us about your experience? Um, yes. Yeah, so, as I said before, um, it was, uh, the course was uh, very supportive and um, I not only developed, like, the knowledge, but also a uh, unique skill. Uh, and I think I'm I'm not working in a lab, but I, I'm sure that uh, in the future this will come um, in hand. That I have that advantage to also be able to um, continue in research. Uh, so. Thank you so much. Thank you all for your contributions. When we originally advertised the stream, we did post a question. Um, and uh, answer sheet app, so students have been getting in touch. So I'm just gonna go through some of the questions that we've got on the booking form. And the first one is probably a question that's on the lips of most students. And that is, how will the course be taught in September? So Neil, am I okay to pass this over to yeah. you? Yeah, I, um, I, I'll, I'll do a little bit and then maybe I'll throw it back to, to, to somebody who's on the course now and they've gone through a, a time of being taught under normal circumstances and then taught um, within the confines of your house. Um, as every university is across the, the whole globe, I would imagine, um, we are going through our various strategies now where we're looking at how we're going to teach and the formats that we're going to teach are, are going to be very dynamic. I don't think we can we can enter into the, the coming year with one idea about how we're going to teach. It's going to be a very rolling stock um, approach to how we're going to teach. But I think, as with most institutes, a lot of the teaching is going to be um, asynchronous in that we will be teaching. Um, there will be lectures that are put up for students to look at. And so the problem there is students start to think, well, I'm, I'm, why, why do I want to join a course where I'm going to be looking at lectures? Um, and not be taught but the thing is they will be backed up with seminars and support systems from that and of course there will also be um, synchronous taught face-to-face -face lectures um, we are looking at how we can teach our, our students because it's an msc course most msc courses unless they're business orientated i would say so, so the science based they tend to be small size courses and so because they're small size courses, we're hoping that we're able to still continue to do all of our wet lab, all of our practical based um, 
um, assignments, practical based skill sets. Um, but we will be teaching a lot of face to face via this kind of mechanism where um, where we can speak to the students and the students can come in and they can ask their questions. So uh, rather than having to get up at you know, seven o'clock in the morning, have your breakfast and then trudge into the university. The good thing is you can sit in front of uh, the, the, the system with your camera off if you want to sit in your pajamas and um, do the lecture, attend the lecture, engage mm -hmm. the lecture. We don't have to see you um, on camera. Um, you know, depends on how gorgeous you are to look at, whether we'll want to see you on camera or not, I suppose. Um, but we're, we're looking to, to, to teach via many different strategies. Um, for the coming year we're, we're, you know as a team we're all looking at it quite hard and we're we're trying to make sure that the experience is just as as useful as it is as if you were in the classroom um i love to teach um uh, you know I, I think i come alive when i'm teaching and so it, it for me it's going to be a, a a transition as well and i'm hoping that i can still give the same kind of experience teaching from home um via via the internet um, but we are also looking at getting students in um, for a, a few face-to-face -face lectures during the, the course of the year so we're going to we're going to use a, a blended approach to how we teach during the common year um, i suppose we could throw the question back to maria if she's if she's okay with answering that because um, mm -hmm. maria is a, one of our current students and so she's had the the pleasure or the misfortune of being taught by me in, in the classroom um and now she's in the situation where she's actually doing a project during a time of covid so i, I don't know if um, maria wants to chip in there yeah so when the whole situation happened um i think we were lucky enough that we only had two weeks left from the second term so we barely had any lectures and Pretty much they were all cancelled and switched to online. Uh, how they approached it, it was through Zoom meetings and Blackboard learning. And pretty much, even though the lectures were uploaded sometimes, and we were just talking through the lectures, for example, the seminars, which is something more interactive, we kept doing that. We were doing some meetings, we kept talking to each other, we kept um, presenting the questions, answering and working together. So that didn't change that much. It was just that instead face to face it was through camera and well the few lectures we had from other models it was basically the last lectures which is always asking questions and doubts from coursework so that was switched to ask whenever you have any doubt through emails and we can arrange some meetings whether it is individual groups that so we kind of adapted to the situation without any problem we barely had any uh, problem. They were extensions for all the cars was because of the situation, and even if you had any issue with any of the models, why because of the COVID situation, they would change. They even give you more time to do the cars without any problem. And regarding the research dissertation, it's been switched to working from home because we are not able to go back to lab yet. So in my case, for example. Um, I, I'm doing, I'm going to be working with different, uh, I believe in cytochromes, and then it's going to be pretty much doing analysis. Um, really depends on what you want to do, because I'm aware that our people that are not interested in bioinformatics, they're going to focus more in research and reviews. Others that are really interested in bioinformatics are going to do a whole analysis of that. So I guess that they are adapting to what students want. And so far, from the people I know from the master are having fun with the dissertation, so, yeah. Thank you so much for that. Anyone else want to add on to that question? Ooh. Um, One of us has dropped out. Florence has dropped out. One just, to add on to that, just to add on to that, um, when I was studying for my, you know, my exams and whatnot, um, I used the recorded um, sessions to actually go back through my notes because Newest can be quite rapid sometimes because of how tight the course is. So we are um, given the to like listen to podcasts again, you know, and listen and listen to the lectures again, and that helped me, you know, pick out a lot of things I didn't get to pick out in during the lectures. So even before COVID, like recording of lectures has been quite useful. So let's put that out there. Thank you so much for that. Lawrence is back yeah, we're, as well. Yeah, we're we're also hoping to to, to provide because we're we're aware that we're we're not going to have this face to face element again. It does mean that um, our availability is going to be a lot 
better i would say in terms of you know because often if you if you um you know if you come and try and get me in my office i might not be in my office because i'll be in a in a lecture whereas if you if we via this method method you know people can 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 ask us immediately and we can give face-to-face -face feedback rather than email so what we are seeing is people are switching more from a, an email scenario to a quick face-to-face -face five minute talk and um it's a very very good mechanism for for doing that kind of thing speaking to to, to, to people via a video link um because it takes just as much time to type in that answer it's just as as easy to to, to give a student um uh, a ring via the the teams or zoom or whatnot um so i think it's it's, it's going to work out quite well and we're, we're also thinking about what um sound bites we can put on lectures and break lectures down from instead of an hour lecture where towards the end you, you're, you're kind of losing the will to live in some cases depends on the subject matter um break it down into smaller sound bites so you, you know they're more um staccato in their approach to, to, to the material we're teaching so i'm hoping it's going to going to pan out quite quite well Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Um, got some questions for our grads and our current students. So is the group work or will the group work? Has it been mostly individual or is it group orientated? What, what's your experiences been on that, guys? Um, well, I can talk about that now. So um, it really depends because there are coursework that you have to do presentations in groups. For example, business module is a whole coursework in group where you have to design a whole business with four or five people. And then you also have individual uh, work. So it kind of depends on the module and the coursework. And you kind of, oops. Um, yeah, so it kind of varies within the model, but you're able to do both. Thank you. Any other student want to contribute to that? Yeah, um, what I would say is um, like with some research work we had to do, we were paired up. So I know a few occasions where I was paired up with a few of my course mates and we had to work together. And I felt that that was good as well because it, it teaches you how to like, you know, work with someone else, it teaches you about communication and how to listen to other people's points of views. And like Mario said, like in the business, we were putting groups of like four, five, six. We had to create new businesses. And sometimes we have to work on our own. So I guess you get a bit of everything. You know, you get to experience everything. Absolutely. Florence, Sarah? Um, yes, definitely the business module was very interesting to work in groups because as Neil said, um, they come from different backgrounds. So I was uh, in a group with people who already had been studying business for a few years and having their input and I learned actually a lot from them uh, just by working together because they taught me things that um, were not taught in, that, uh, in those lectures because it was uh, only one module in business but that interaction and um, trying to work together was um, very helpful excellent um so Darren? oh yeah the, mm, the the group works maybe um like they mentioned the the business is creativity and uh, we, we have many group presentations i think that this really helped you uh, a lot mm, since uh when you come to work you, you always need to learn how to learn the teamwork and mm, the group the group the group project will help you mm, match uh, the role you play in a team yeah mm. Absolutely. Uh, Neil, I've got one that follows on the back of this roughly, so maybe you could shed a bit more light on this. Can you give more information on the presentation of the coursework or the practicals and what to expect if you're a current student? Okay, yeah. So um, our course is split. So uh, I know as students, one of the, the questions I get asked routinely, w without exception, any time that I have a, an open evening is, are there any exams on your course? I, I think people have a phobia about exams. Um, our, our course has um, three modules which do contain an exam component to them. Um, and they're normally three hour written exams. Um, but there is another component to that module, which is 
coursework orientated so it's kind of like a 50 50 approach it's not like the whole of your the weight of the module is is on your ability to regurgitate or in some case vomit the information that you've learned all year um so we, we have a, a 50 50 mix and there's only three modules that have exam components to them um, and the other components are either short essays or, or presentation skill type um, assessments um, and the rest of the modules so um if we if we think about this we have bioinformatics which has an, an exam component to it and a coursework component to it we have the um um, fermentation module which again is a presentation component as a, a, a assessment and an exam we have the gene cloning uh, module which is a, a fat module so it's a 30 credit module so that one is broken up into a practical ass assessment so can you do the skills in the laboratory because we're trying to turn scientists out that can actually pick up a gilson and use a gilson um, can you um, answer questions in an exam and we look at that from a perspective of the evolution of a um, an idea into the production of a protein that can be used as a pharmaceutical so that take that forms the basis of the exam type questions um, and then the third component is a, a laboratory practical write-up um, the other modules on the course are all 100% um, coursework orientated so um, students tend to perform better in these modules um, and so I would say the vast majority of the course is 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 more coursework orientated. I know there are other um, courses within the university where the the whole of the 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 degree MSc is based on coursework, um, and so some people pick a, a course based on that. But I I really think you shouldn't think about shying away from a course just because of an exam component because you might you might miss out on a, a, a spectacular experience for the fear of worrying about three hours of the whole of the MSc. Yeah, and, 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 and none of those exam components take up such a critical component of the modules that they're catastrophic to your overall mark. Um, so I, I think we've got a good spread of different types of assignments and different types of coursework. And obviously um, with the coming, co coming year, because of how we're going to be able to do assessments, some of those procedures that we we assess are going to change slightly but by and large um, it's not going to be one type of assessment that you'll get for every single module each module has a slightly different take on the way they assess you thank you so much for that neil um, and we have also had this admission question from a student so am i late for 2020 admission definitely not so we're, we're still accepting people for, for um, 2020 admission. Obviously, the sooner, the better, because after this talk, we'll be inundated. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, so um, it's definitely not too late. You know, um, if you think about it, um, we recruit from predominantly an undergraduate basis. Yeah, so although we have postgraduates applying for the course, the vast majority of our clients, if you want, are undergraduate in nature. And all those undergraduates, if you've done your undergraduate degree this year, you've only probably just put your pen down last week. And so, you know, is your mind switched into applying for courses now? I would probably say you're only just thinking about that. So, um, you know, definitely at this point in time, it is not too late to apply for admission onto the course. But the sooner you get on with that, the better. If you're an alumni of De Montford, it's a, a much easier process. Um, there isn't quite so much you've got to fill in because we know about you already. We know about how good you are as students or um um, what what your skill sets are. If you're an overseas student or somebody applying from another university, it is the same procedure you would have for any other university um, across the globe. There is a, a, a form that needs to be filled out, some kind of um, proof of who you are and what qualifications you've got. But we're certainly by no means at, at a point where you've missed missed the ability to, to apply on the course. And, um, you know, we, we welcome as many applications as we can. Excellent. Cue the herd of students for September, Please, Neil. Yes, yes. <laughs> OK, so we appreciate we've taken up an hour of your day, so we're going to start to wrap up here. But before we go, I just want to put our current students on the spot a little bit. And I'm just going to ask you for one quick tip that you would give for all those students that are now currently filling out their application forms for September 2020 about how they could prepare over the summer. So who wants to go first? Not all at once, guys. I don't mind starting. I think that the main thing you should do is 
if you're, for example, international, it's my case, kind of using this a little bit, watching TV show, films, something that can help you out with the uh, English and so you can be ready to go to an, to UK and uh, start the model, uh, the start the course. Thank you so much for that. Maria, who's next? Well, yeah, me. I think, um, I, I think it, it, if you are afraid, your background is not kind of related to the biotechnology, bio biotechnology, bio biotechnology, and you can go through some list and you can ju just cover some of the basic knowledge of bio biologic. Yeah, that's all. Excellent. Thank you so much. Won you? Yeah, I would say um, go through the course list that's on the website, um, see what the course entails, and the areas where you might be a bit confused, you know, you can do some, a little bit of research before you start the course, it will give you an added advantage. Um, also, I would say, if you want to be thinking ahead of the course and think people getting a job, you know, get connected with the professional world, you know, maybe create a LinkedIn or something like that, get into talks with professionals. If you can go for a conference or two, you know, they're doing a lot of virtual conferences now, you know, and they're throwing them everywhere because, you know, they can get physical bodies. So they're making it quite easy for us to do conferences now. So get in on things like get your added value, added, you know, knowledge, which will make, you know, starting the course very easy for you. That's all Absolutely. I mean. Absolutely. I think this is the perfect opportunity to take advantage of the digital infrastructure. So last but not least, Florence. Yeah, like what you said, uh, I totally agree. Just um, um, look uh, through the course and see, or maybe do some extra reading on uh, certain areas that you're not familiar with. Um, and then also for international students, um, yes, yeah, some English should always be helpful. So think it was on time so yeah thank you and finally neil from a from a tutor's perspective what what one piece of advice would you give to students over the summer i, I think i'm looking at it from from my perspective of, uh, of the msc that i applied for i think it's important to find a course that you're going to find interesting um because it's all very well doing a course that will get you a job at the end of the day but if you're going to have a year of absolute torture because you don't enjoy the course, what's the likelihood of you, you know, enjoying the career that you're aspiring to because it pays well? I think it's also very useful to speak to program leaders. Um, if I get an email, if I get a phone call from somebody asking about the course, I'm going to spend the time talking to that student because I want to know about that student. I want to know that the course is right for you. Um, I think it's all very well reading about courses, but it's really important if you can to speak to the people who are going to be teaching you. And if you don't click with those people, um, you're probably not going to enjoy the lectures that you're, 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 you're that's being delivered to you over the years. So it's, it's important to, to to see that you gel well with the course and the way the course runs. Some courses are very preclusive in the way they, they, they teach. Some courses are a little bit more fuzzy in terms of how they um, take the students to their to their heart. So it's, it's also important to look at it from, you, you know, how you're going to feel while you're doing the course rather than am I getting the knowledge that I need in order to progress on my career? So, so that, that's what I would take. You know, I think there isn't a program leader in the land who wouldn't welcome questions about their course because they want you to join their course particularly from my perspective i want people to join my course who are going to be engaged and enjoy the course because if you enjoy the course i really enjoy teaching you if you don't enjoy the course i go home feeling quite um dejected that you've not had a good time on the course so it's about making sure that you get enough information about a course so that you know you're going to enjoy that course during during the year. MSCs are difficult. They're tough. You know, there's a lot of information being thrown at you during an MSC. And it just makes the whole experience a little bit better if you can buy into the course before you get on the course because you know what you're, you know, you're going to expose yourself. So, so speak to the program leaders, you know, drop them an email, ask them. You know, I had one year where I had a, um, a student from from um, from India and she must have sent me about 30 emails before the course um, started. 
Um, and of course, I answered all of those emails and it meant that she had a real good understanding of what the course was. And obviously, if you're coming from India, why wouldn't you ask 20 questions? It's a long way to travel to find out you've, you're not going to enjoy the course for a year. So definitely engage with the people who are running the course. Ask them the questions that you want. Um, and as as everybody's on the, on, on the live link today has said, um, you know, drop in on these kind of things, drop, drop in on the conferences, get a little bit more background knowledge um, before you, you, you apply. Absolutely. Looking back to my own MA experience, I just wish my teachers, my lecturers were just like you, Neil. So supportive, so understanding. Looking back at my own experience, I don't think they're quite the same, to be fair. <laughs> so yeah. that's brought us to the end of our live stream. And I just want to say a massive thank you for you all tuning in. Now, yeah. as part of my job as being both Ant and Deck, I have to do a bit of a closing credits. And the first thing that I want to draw your attention to, I've posted these in, a, in the link so you can refer back to them at a later stage. Please do check out the course page for ph pharmaceutical and biotechnology. If there's any questions that you guys have had that we haven't been able to answer in this live stream or haven't been able to address, then please do feel free to click onto the link in the comments and you'll be able to speak to one of the members in the team. The Montford University has a open day coming up on Saturday, the 4th of July. Um, it's a digital open day. And again, it's an extra opportunity for you guys to see the campus, to have a look at our facilities and ask any last minute questions before you all put those applications in for September 2020. And we've also got a Facebook group that is live. So if you are joining this year, please do feel free again to click on the link there, join the Facebook group with fellow applicants to discuss anything relating to entry for September 2020. So before I go, is there anything else that you guys would like to add? No? Everyone happy no. with that? We're all good. So it's a goodbye from me. Um, you all want to say your own goodbyes? Yep. Thank you very much for joining us today. Stay safe out there. It's still not 100% safe. Just be careful of yourselves and uh, get those application forms in. What, what better way to spend time in, in your house than filling in the application form for this course? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Good luck for everyone uh, next year. Okay. <laughs> Bye.